Okay, so we are recording. All right, so here we go. Uh, in this chapter, we're we are dealing with uh, fluid mechanics. So um, we are studying um, uh, issues rel related with fluids in motion and at rest. So we'll study fluids in motion and at rest. Uh, that's what this chapter is about. Uh, now, the three common states of matter that you encounter are solids, liquids, and gases. Okay. And um, um, so solids, in solids, uh, atoms are fixed in place. In fluids, uh, atoms can um, atoms and molecules can move about, and so also in gases. Um, the difference between fluids and gases is uh, in fluids, um, uh, atoms and molecules are much closer to each other uh, than in that, than in uh, gases. And you'll see that in fluids, the atoms and molecules are about ten times closer than in gases. So. Uh, and here are some um, other properties. Solids have definite volumes and shapes. Uh, liquids have definite volumes, that's, um, uh, but not definite shapes. So you can pour a liquid into any shape container. But uh, um, you don't change the volume of a liquid much, even if you increase uh, the pressure in it. Gases, on the other hand, so again, you can pour them for not they can be put in any shape container, but the difference between liquids and gases is uh, their volumes can be changed dramatically uh, by increasing pressure, uh, by changing pressure on them. Okay. So again, uh, the atoms in a solid are at fixed location and uh, uh, they vibrate in their fixed location. Uh, Atoms in a liquid um, there do not have any fixed location, so you can mark this atom, and if you come back a little while later, it'll be uh, in a very different spot in the liquid. Okay, it can move about in all parts of the liquid. And in a gas, similarly, atoms do not have fixed locations. Now, in physics too, you'll learn, uh, here's an interesting fact, uh, uh, <clears throat> Now, if this solid, this liquid, and this gas have the same temperature, what that would mean is that the average kinetic energy per atom for this solid, for this liquid, and for this gas, they're the same. So if they have the same temperature, then the average kinetic energy will be the same. Okay? So that's an interesting fact that you'll learn. <clears throat> Uh, in physics too. Okay, so this chapter is divided into two parts. Uh, the first part will study liquids, fluids at rest. So the liquid is at rest and uh, we want to study the properties of this liquid. Uh, one of the important things you learn is the pressure in a liquid increases with depth. Uh, so since the pressure increases with depth, uh, force is pressure times area. And so as you go deeper and deeper into the liquid, the force in the liquid, the force that the liquid exerts on objects that it's in contact with it are greater with depth. And that, so this is the cross section of a dam wall. And since the force the liquid exerts is uh, getting greater with depth, the thickness of the dam wall has to increase. Okay, so you will see all of this. And then, so the first part of the chapter is we'll study fluids at rest. And in the second part of the chapter, we'll study fluids in motion. So for instance, um, uh, when an airplane flies, um, uh, the plane is moving and uh, um, through a fluid that's at rest, or you can look at it as uh, the plane is at rest and the fluid is moving, up, and the air is moving up. Um, over it, over the wings. And uh, we'll study what happens, some of the properties of this fluid in motion. Okay, Or you can think of a river flowing and so on. So we'll study those. Uh, 
So we'll study fluids at rest and then fluids in motion. Okay, so let's start off by defining the density of a material. Density is denoted by rho, and uh, density is mass per unit volume. Okay. So density of air, so we'll look at densities of typical gases and uh, liquids and solids. So density of air is about one kilogram per meter cube. And a meter cube is the volume of that lectern in the, in the classroom. Okay, so that's meter cube. And a kg is about, one kg is about 2.2 pounds. So one meter cube of air weighs about 1.3 kgs. Now let's go to a typical liquid and uh, fresh water. One meter cube of fresh water weighs a thousand kgs. Okay, so water liquid has a density about a thousand times greater than a gas. Now uh, that what that means is uh, so the uh, the density is a thousand times more. What that means is the, for the same mass the volume is 1,000 times less, meaning in a liquid, the atoms are 10 times closer than in a gas. That's what this number means. And uh, let's take a typical solid. Uh, here's lead whose density is, uh, is 11.3 uh, times 10 to the power of three kgs. It's 11 times greater than that of a liquid. And what that means is uh, two cube is eight. So roughly in a solid, the atoms are about twice as close as that in a liquid. Okay, so again, when you go from a gas to a liquid, the atoms have come 10 times closer. And then when you go from a liquid to a solid, the atoms are twice as close. Okay, so that's what those numbers mean. Okay, now we'll define pressure. Uh, pressure is the force per unit area. So imagine an object under inside this liquid and what the liquid does it, is it exerts a pressure uh, on the object and the pressure is the force the liquid exerts divided by the area of the face. So pressure is force divided by area. Um, pressure, is, pressure is a scalar and the units in which the SI units for pressure forces are measured in newtons and area in meter square. And uh, so it's newton per meter square. And um, <clears throat> this, uh, this combination of units is called a Pascal after Mr. Pascal, uh, who studied uh, this kind of stuff extensively. <clears throat> All right, now let's look at the pressure as a function of depth. It turns out that if you, if you go deeper in a liquid, the pressure in a fluid increases with depth. And the pressure is given by this expression, pressure at any depth is P naught, the pressure at the surface plus rho GH. Rho is the density of the fluid, G is the acceleration due to gravity and H is the depth to which you've gone. So the pressure at this location is the pressure at the top of the liquid, which is atmospheric pressure, plus rho G H. So the deeper you go, uh, the higher the pressure. And uh, <clears throat> you will see that uh, in water, uh, so if this is one atmosphere, if you go 33 feet in water or 10 meters in water, the pressure at that place is uh, uh, two atmospheres. So every 33 feet, the pressure increases by one atmosphere, okay, in water. <clears throat> so uh, as we mentioned earlier, um, because pressure increases with depth, dam walls have to be thicker. So as the pressure increases with depth, the force the liquid is exerting on the wall is increasing. And the wall, so, so to counter that, the walls have to be thicker and stronger. So um, here's uh, again another picture. Here's a dam wall, and you can see that the pressure is increasing linearly. And force is pressure times area, so the force would correspondingly increase. And 
so the dam walls are thicker. This illustrates, this device illustrates uh, pressure increasing with depth, okay? So now the speed at which a fluid comes out depends on the pressure difference between the ends of the tube. So uh, the pressure inside here is the pressure in the, in the liquid and the pressure at the spout is the atm atmospheric pressure. Okay, so you see at a greater depth, the pressure difference between this spout is greater and the fluid is coming out uh, faster and it flow, uh, lands further away. Okay, so this, uh, this device illustrates pressure increasing with depth. All right, um, so we defined two, uh, two terms, absolute and gauge pressure. Absolute pressure is the actual pressure, okay? So you saw that the pressure at this depth is atmospheric pressure plus rho GH, uh, the density of the fluid times G times height. Okay. Now it turns out that most ga gauges, pressure gauges, what they actually measure is the actual measure minus atmospheric pressure. Okay, so if you took a pressure gauge that you bought at a store and tried to measure the pressure there, what it actually measures is the actual pressure minus atmospheric pressure. So it just measures the pressure due to this liquid. So for instance, in your cars, when it says, uh, by the way, one atmosphere is 15 PSI. So check your car tires and the the recommended pressure is about 30 psi, uh, two atmospheres, but that's the gauge pressure. So the actual pressure of air inside your car tires is 45 psi. Okay, anyway. So gauge pressure is absolute pressure minus atmospheric pressure, and that's gauge pressure. All right, so atmospheric pressure is P naught, that's the standard notation for it, and one atmospheric pressure in pascals in SI units is 10 to the power five pascals, 1.013 times 10 to the five pascals. So 100,000 pascals. Okay, and so here's, uh, here's what uh, this diagram is showing you. Uh, so here's the model of air and air molecules bouncing off the walls, that's how they exert pressure uh, on the surface. And this force is, uh, so again, this is about 15 PSI, 15 pounds per square inch. So what that means is, oops, um, let's see. So what that means is, for every square inch, the force that air exerts is 15 pounds. Okay. Can you guys see that uh, writing? Hello, can you guys see that writing? Can somebody unmute and? Yes, sir, we can see it. Okay. All right, so let me make sure we understand this. So a standard sheet of paper is uh, about 10 inch by 10 inch, which is a uh, 100 inch square. Okay, so the atmospheric force on a standard sheet of paper like this is uh, 1500 pounds. Okay, so that's how large atmospheric pressure is. Okay. Uh, now, so here's a demonstration of uh, um, atmospheric pressure. Uh, so this is an oil tanker, and uh, generally after you unload your, uh, the tanker, what they do is they steam clean it. Okay, so some guys steam clean the tanker, and then unfortunately he forgot and he put the lid on on the tanker. So now you have hot steam in the tanker, and at night the steam cool, and all the steam condensed into water. And so the pressure inside the tanker decreased tremendously and the outside pressure crushed the tanker. So that's uh, how great atmospheric pressure is. Okay, and now here's a, so here's two ways to think about pressure. And the pressure that the atmosphere exerts. 
is because of these molecules bouncing off the walls and they exert a force on this, this wall. You can also think of pressure as the weight of this atmospheric pressure, the weight of this column of atmosphere being supported. So atmospheric pressure is uh, 10 to the power 5 pascals, uh, 10 to the power 5. 10 to the power 5 pascals is um, pascals is uh, 10 to the power 5 newton per meter squared. Uh, newtons is uh, mass times gravity, so and g is 10, so this is roughly 10,000. Oops. Okay. So, Okay, so ten to ten to five pascals. Ten thousand kg times ten meters per second square. And yeah, there's, there's something going on with my pen. Divided by mu squared. Okay, so uh, atmosphere. This. Can you guys see the pen? I mean, this writing, this pen is auto erasing for some reason. Okay, so one atmosphere is the weight of 10,000 kgs. So what that means is uh, okay, so what that means is uh, what we are saying is, um, let's see. Okay, so what that means is the weight of this column of atmosphere a one meter square area of cross section. The weight of this air column all the way to space is 10,000 kgs, which is roughly the weight of a school bus. Okay, so and that's what one atmosphere means. Yeah. So you can think of an atmosphere as uh, uh, pressure, atmospheric pressure is resulting because of the air molecules bouncing off, the billions and billions of them bouncing off every inch square, and they exert a force of 15 pounds or you can think of it, uh, atmospheric pressure, the weight of this column of air all the way to space, and it weighs, uh, the mass of this column of air is 10,000 kgs. Okay, okay. so, um, we use a barometer to measure pressure, and uh, the uh, uh, generally a commonly used barometer is a mercury bar barometer. And one atmospheric pressure will support a column of mercury uh, 7.76 meters, which is 76 centimeters. Okay, so here's a barometer. Uh, this is a mercury trough, and you take a tube and uh, fill it with mercury and invert it in here, and this will be vacuum. So uh, the way to think of this barometer is uh, yeah. so so here is mercury um, trough. Okay. 
and uh, Let me get to this here. This is the marking. And these have the same area of cross section. So the weight of this column of air all the way to space is equal to the weight of this column of mercury, 76 centimeter column of mercury, of the same area of cross section. Okay. So that's what uh, this is. And so a barometer is used to measure atmospheric pressure all right uh, so <clears throat> now uh, it turns out that um, it turns out that um, the density of the atmosphere decreases exponentially okay so if you so if you this is the height above ground level and if you measure the density of air at ground level the density is low not which is 1.29 uh, kd per meter cube okay. so 1.29 kg per meter cube now, but as you go up in height, it decreases exponentially. Okay, and that's what we are going to sh show you. So the density is decreasing as you're going up. Okay. And I'm going to, um, all right, so what this diagram is, the diagram is showing you is, okay, so imagine a slab of atmosphere. Okay. So, this thing is not falling down, so the force at the bottom must be greater than the force at the top. So this weight, mg at the bottom, at the top. So mg must equal force at the bottom minus force at the top. Okay. And so the pressure at the bottom must be greater greater than pressure at the top so pressure at the bottom must be greater than pressure at the top okay and that's what's holding this slab of air up okay so that is the idea because so the pressure at the bottom is greater than pressure at the top so as you go up in the atmosphere the pressure is decreasing and uh, this goes through the derivation i'm not going to go to the derivation and what in, ends up happening is what you and find out is the density of air molecules okay so the number density you know, how many uh, air molecules there are per unit volume decreases exponentially and you see the expression is interesting it's e to the power of minus mgy and minus MGY is the potential energy of an air molecule divided by Kp. Uh, K, K is the Boltzmann's constant, and um, uh, P is the temperature. Now, for this uh, for for this derivation, what we have assumed is that the temp temperature remains constant as you uh, rise up. But that's not true. But well, for our purposes, we'll assume that it's uh, that's the assumption under which this derivation is made. Okay, so if the temperature remains constant, the exponent and the um, atmosphere would decrease exponentially. And you can put in those numbers. You can put in the number for the average mass of the air molecule. And what it works out is uh, the atmosphere ex um, decreases exponentially, with the constant being 8.8 .8 kilometers. Uh, nine kilometers which is roughly six miles so what that means is and uh, so the pressure similarly decreases like that so if you go up about six miles the pressure at that point is 35 percent the pressure at, at ground level okay so that's what that means so at at, at about 8.8 .8 kilometers uh, the density of air and the pressure is one over e times the ground density or the ground pressure. Uh, so in Denver, for instance, um, the pressure is 80% that of at Daytona Beach. 
<clears throat> All right, so now I will pause. This is a good time to pause. And I, I will let you guys ask questions if you have any. Yeah. Also, this is um, this is a good time for me to try and figure out this thing on this new device. Uh, okay. So, if you guys have any questions, uh, unmute your. Um, 